Hi everybody, welcome back. Sorry for the late video. Normally I post on Sundays, um, but I wanted to switch the topic that um, I was originally going to post in favor to um, something that was brought up by DT from DistroTube. And if you've never watched his channel, uh, I'll put a link down in the below. And I'm going to put a link to the video specifically that um, kind of brought this up. Uh, which is one where he talks about Richard Stallman and some of the statements that he's made recently uh, and asks, uh, should Richard be uh, fired from MIT? So my position on this is pretty definitively, he should absolutely not be fired from MIT. Um, I think that would be a, a travesty. So if you're not familiar with the, the situation, um, this, uh, this goes back to the Epstein kind of insanity that's happened. And if you are not aware of that, uh, <laughs> it's a whole thing. Um, so, uh, yeah, go just do a Google search on Epstein, um, you know, sex ring or whatever. Um, horrible thing. Um, so the accusations against Epstein is that he ran, uh, basically an underage, um, sex ring kind of thing and that he would bring other people into it um, and sort of offer this as like a service to, you know, affluent people to, you know, get uh, underage, you know, girls. And it's terrible. It's obviously horrifying. And um, he committed suicide uh, in jail. Um, so... There's a lot of questions about this and a lot about, you know, who's being sort of protected because it's a very, very unlikely circumstances uh, that he killed himself. There's a lot of questions about whether he was, you know, murdered. Um, and I, I don't think that's too conspiracy kind of oriented. Like he was on a suicide watch um, and both of the guards that were watching him apparently fell asleep uh, at the same time and didn't check on him at the same time that the cameras uh, both cameras on his cell malfunctioned. Like, you know, it's, it's legitimately kind of a weird thing. So, um, a number of people were sort of named as having participated in these, um, these sex rings, uh, or, you know, having sex with underage women. And one of those people, uh, was a gentleman named, uh, I forget his first name, uh, Minsky, uh, who was the, one of the founders of the, uh, artificial intelligence um, program at MIT, uh, and I believe the MIT Media Lab, um, which is where Richard Solomon uh, uh, currently works, from my understanding. And he certainly works at MIT. I'm not sure exactly if he's still with the, the AI team or, or what exactly he's working on, but um, he uh, made some, um, some comments on an internal uh, MIT mailing list, uh, effectively saying um, that he felt like Minsky uh, could have, um, um, been under the impression that the girl he had sex with, uh, was willing. And, um, that was possible that he didn't know uh, her age or that it may have been legal depending on where they were. I guess the girl was 17, uh, who Minsky had had sex with. And, <clears throat> um, a lot of people have been calling for him to be fired, saying that that's, um, you know, horrendous and inappropriate and, um, you know, that he has, no longer has any place, uh, at the, the university. Um, and some of the people who have been talking about this have said that this is, this is not something that you should be talking about at work. Um, you know, uh, regardless of what you think, and that's, that's an issue. Um, so my take on it is, is pretty simple. Um, the founder of the department, which he currently works or previously works, which he almost certainly has, um, a, had a personal relationship with Minsky's Minsky's passed on. He's dead. Um, you know, was brought up as part of the scandal. So obviously you're going to be talking about this. Um, and he is talking about it in a very specific setting. He is talking about it as a member of the Academy. He is not working for a corporation. So in a university, uh, a university is supposed to be a battleground of ideas. Uh, and you are never supposed to be um, penalized uh, for for having a unpopular opinion. Um, now, if you 
posit things that you are unable to defend uh, and you are not, um, you know, uh, pushing forward your field of study, um, those are grounds to be fired. Or if you actively do something that uh, is inappropriate. Now, if, if Richard Stallman had been accused uh, of having underage sex with, uh, you know, a minor or, you know, um, um, effectively raping or, you know, statutory rape uh, or legitimate rape, we don't know the, the circumstance. That, that, that sounded terrible. Statutory rape obviously is a legitimate form of rape, but I meant in terms of the traditional thinking of a, of, of a forced rape, uh, physically forced rape. Um, you know, uh, obviously that would be absolutely grounds uh, for firing somebody, but he didn't do that. He talked about it. And he talked about it basically saying that somebody that he probably had a personal relationship probably was a mentor to him, probably was very friendly with, uh, who he has some affection for, um, is being accused of these horrendous things. And he's not there to defend himself. <clears throat> and whether or not you agree um, with Richard Solomon's assessment uh, of the situation, which I certainly don't, I, I think that, you know, <laughs> you know if, if, you're, if you're an old man and you're having sex with, you know, 17-year-olds, um, regardless of you know, if you're technically allowed to in the Bahamas uh, or, you know, wherever you are, because that's the, you know, that's the law. I mean, like if you go to Rome, right, if you go to Rome in, in Vatican City, um, if memory serves, the age of consent is 12, right? So I don't care who you are. <laughs> if, you're, if you're a grown adult uh, and you're, you're hooking up with a 12-year-old, um, you know, you should be, you should be buried under a prison. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, you're a terrible person. Um, but what he was saying was, you know, this, this guy does, is not here to defend himself. Uh, we don't know the circumstance. Um, it, you know, basically saying that there is some possibility that this person was not entirely, um, either aware or, you know, um, he was just, he was coming to the defense of somebody who he had a personal relationship with who has not been convicted, right? Obviously he can't be convicted. He's dead. Um, but I don't think that's a horrible thing. Um, I think it's, I think it's unfortunate. I think it's bad optics. I think it's, you know, um, something I wouldn't want to, to hear if I worked with, with Richard. And I think the appropriate reaction to it is what I would do if I worked with him, which is I would go over to him in his office, in person, knock on the door and say, Hey man, um, can we sit down for a minute? Like, you know, I know you, and then we would have a conversation about how, you know, we were, um, you know, obviously in a weird position, how he had, you know, a, a friendship with this person, but, you know, I, I, it could be, you know, hurtful to people to, to hear that, um, you know, uh, he's coming to the defense of somebody who almost certainly was, you know, a, a, a rapist effectively and talk to him about it as a human. Um, and then maybe he can learn from that and go forward. Um, we're we're in a really weird place now where and this is getting off the topic of of Linux and stuff but um we're in a really weird place now where we're we're you know firing people and we're we're canceling people for for things that um you know sometimes are absolutely legitimate you know they're you know if you look at the me too thing like the me too you know there was a lot of really fucked up shit that went on uh that I think a lot of men were were either only somewhat aware of or we're not really aware of or we're not ex aware of the extent of. And that was um, a huge revelation to, to a lot of us. And a lot of those people, again, um, you know, like they should be, <laughs> they should be dealt with uh, in, a, in, a, in a way that, you know, um, uh, as somebody who grew up in Boston uh, in a very Irish neighborhood, uh, which had some connections to the old country, um, you know, they would have been dealt with, um, you know, not through the legal system. Um, and, and I think in some cases that's very, very appropriate. Now I'm not advocating that. Um, but 
optimally. I, I think that's the way some of these people should be, should have been dealt with. Um, but let's say Richard Solomon was fired, right? Let's say he was fired from MIT. What happens next? Can he get a job somewhere else? If he can't work at MIT because he's such a terrible person, he probably, I mean, stands to reason he wouldn't be allowed to work at any other university, right? So if he can't work at another university because he's such a bad person, can he work at a company? Can he do consulting? Is he just supposed to not be able to work anymore and starve to death? I mean, obviously this is, you know, taking to an extreme, but like, what's the, what's the end game here? Like, what is the, you know, what is the expected result? Um, and in some cases, I think that's, that's legitimately, okay, this person cannot be employed again. You know, if you look at somebody like Harvey Weinstein, you know, the, the level of abuse of his power um, and the things that he did that he's accused of doing and, and settled, uh, you know, in court um, from doing, allegedly, that he's done, I don't think that it would be appropriate to ever have him work anywhere again and be in a position of power because it would be way too dangerous for the, the women who work with him. I, I, I think that's legitimate. Like, he cannot be employed again. Um, now, he also has a lot of money, so this is not as much of a, a, a you know, a, a tr punishment for him. I mean, I, I think you know, in, in a lot of ways he, he got off really, really easy with this stuff. Um, but let's say it was a guy who owned a restaurant, right? Um, and he wasn't as affluent and he didn't have, you know, millions of dollars in the bank. If he did the same kind of things to his employees, he should never be able to work again. Um, he needs to be taken out of the system. I don't know how that really works. I mean, basically you're resentencing that person to death uh, or do they just have to go on welfare or like, what is the, what is the game plan there? Um, but this isn't that. This is very, 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 very much shy of that. And it's also delving into an area of, of the censorship of ideas within the academy. And I think that's incredibly dangerous. We never want to get to a place. Um, and I know that, that a lot of people are saying that this is already the case in a lot of places where if you have unpopular ideas in a university setting, um, you can't voice them um, because you'll be fired or you'll have some kind of punitive action. Um, you know, this is, this is a, a legitimate concern. Um, I know a lot of comedians now will not play universities uh, because people are so sensitive uh, to, you know, to topics. Um, and some of that's legitimate. You know, I mean, if you look at, you know, the news over the, the, the weekend, um, there was the, that Sean Giles guy, right? And some audio of him surfaced uh, of him saying, you know, pretty repulsive stuff about um, Asian Americans and uh, Andrew Yang, who was running for, for president. And he was summarily fired from Saturday Night Live. Um, I think that was probably legitimate. Um, you know, I think that that's not going to say that he can't work anywhere else. He can work at comedy clubs. He can go back to doing his podcast. Um, it's not a university, right? Um, you know, I, I think um, it's a little bit of a different story. And, and even Yang himself said that, like, he would have favored forgiving the guy uh, so that he could have, have learned a lesson instead of being fired. Um, but, I, you know, I don't necessarily know if I agree with him there. Um, <laughs> that's just, you know, a personal thing. Um, but you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of this going on right now. And I think we just need to be willing to give each other a little bit of slack. Um, you see this stuff like where, where somebody will say something on Twitter, uh, and maybe they, they phrase it poorly. I mean, there was that incident with that, that woman who was on a plane. Um, uh, there was a, there was a Ted talk about this where, you know, this sort of internet mobs, kind of thing where this, uh, this woman had made some comment about how she was going to, to Africa. Um, <clears throat> and somebody said like, don't get AIDS. And she said, don't worry, I'm white or don't get Ebola. Um, and she said, don't worry, I'm white. And then she got on a plane and, you know, while she was in the air, 
um, a huge sort of mob of people uh, saw that that um, that tweet and sort of getting on it, saying that this was super racist. And whether or not you you believe her, um, her claim was that she was making a joke about the disparity between the way that that black and white people are valued, right? So it's it's actually the sort of flip of the way that people were were taking it. Um, and because she was on a plane, she wasn't able to you know defend herself. Um, and she basically had to go in hiding. She was you know fired from her job and um, all this kind of stuff. We're in a weird place. Like it's it's the internet has been a wonderful thing, but it's also been a very strange thing. And um, people screw up. People say bad things. Um, you know, we all do crappy stuff from time to time. Imagine that if your worst side somehow got exposed and got amplified through the public lens. How horrible that would be. Does that mean that you're a bad person? Maybe if you do it a lot. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think we need to be more forgiving of each other. And I think that somebody like Richard Stallman, who is, um, you know, really spent a huge amount of time uh, creating good for uh, our community and for the world kind of generally because open source uh, has created so many wonderful things for the rest of the world. She get a little bit of slack, um, especially when he hasn't done anything. He just said stuff, right? We shouldn't be firing things, you know, firing people for, you know, what they say unless they're incredibly egregious, um, you know? So especially in university settings, right? It's a special case. Ideas are supposed to be sacred. You're not supposed to fire people because of minority opinions, because uh, an opinion might be offensive to somebody. Uh, you're you're supposed to fire people because they are not good at being a professor or not good at um, you know advancing their area of study uh, or contributing to the um, that area of expertise uh, or are, are a bad teacher or do something bad, right? So anyway, that's a bit of a rant. <laughs> but I think it's, uh, it's something that is relevant to, um, you know, the, the IT Linux, um, you know, kind of community. And, uh, because it had, you know, sort of come up, uh, I wanted to sort of weigh in on the topic, uh, and just sort of mention that. So, uh, thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it or anything else on the channel, please give this uh, a thumbs up. Um, if you've got any friends that are trying to get into IT, uh, DevOps, technology in general, <clears throat> feel free to share this channel with them. Uh, probably not this video. This one wouldn't, you know, <laughs> probably not great in terms of like, hey, how do you, what certifications should you get? Uh, kind of thing. This obviously is not that. Um, but generally that's what the channel is about. Um, we talk about IT. We talk about technology. We talk about career paths. And um, if you know anybody who'd be interested in that, uh, feel free to pass this channel along to them. Uh, or, you know, uh, if this is the first time checking it out, go take a look at some of the other videos and uh, maybe subscribe. So thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you guys next week.